Welcome to Empowered with Elizabeth Namofsky. Ladies, what are your top challenges when you're trying to get a handle on your finances? Did you know that your challenges are different at every stage of your life? Today, it's a core discussion. I'm joined by Jackie Porter, Certified Financial Planner at Cart Wealth Management, Inc. Jackie will also tell us her story, and it's not what you would actually think. So welcome, Jackie. So nice to be here. Thank I, you for having me. I haven't seen you in such a long time, so I'm so excited to speak to you today. I know. I was. I know we were talking before the break that um, we were our last lunches before the pandem pandemic. I know. So we've been uh, we've been away from each other for way too long. But before we begin, I want to talk about you, and I want you to tell us the story of your financial journey because you know people think, oh, you work in finance, like you know you came from a great upbringing and you came from you know from wealth or whatever, but that's not the case. Not at all. I was actually raised by a single mom, and she was the kind of mom who, by the time I was seven, was like. Never rely on a man. Always have your own money. So it was kind of drilled in me from the, the time I was walking and talking. And, you know, she was the kind of person who was, she was super entrepreneurial, but she was a new immigrant trying to get her way in Canada. So that the, the, really the struggle of a new immigrant is you work a bunch of jobs and you try to just figure out how to keep roof, on, roof you know, over your head and mm -hmm. bills paid. So what happened was that... Uh, because she was so entrepreneurial and she needed help that she couldn't afford, she got all of her kids involved. So child labor laws are just not what they are today. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't have an opportunity to say no, but she gave me a really good work ethic. Um, she's a person why I, you know, really appreciate working hard and, and that was all her. So fast forward a few years, um, my, my mom unfortunately passed away when I was the age of 16 and I was kind of left on my own to kind of figure out how to do the same thing, keep a roof over my head, pay the bills. And the one thing I learned from her came in really handy was how to work hard. So I worked, you know, three jobs going through high school, shared a bed with my girlfriend, who's still one of my dearest friends in life, and just really struggled to pay the bills and, and, and try to finish university and finish high school. And then, you know, fast forward, I was able to get my first full-time job, just one job, ladies. It was so exciting. <laughs> and um, worked there for a few years, you know, went up the ranks. And then, unfortunately, they were going through transition. So I got let go from my very first full-time job. And I didn't know anything about money at the time, but I was really just happy to have a full-time job I could save. I maxed out all the programs that the employer had available to me. So at the time when I was let go... I didn't, I had built up cash because they had a stock option plan. They had, you know, an opportunity for to put money away in my RSPs. So I needed somebody to help me. And my girlfriend said, you should talk to a financial planner. I'm like, what's that? I never <laughs> even heard of that. Right. But anyway, all of this to say it was the first time I ever sat down with somebody. Um, and she arranged for me to meet this person who ended up being a woman. And even more crazy, a woman of color, which was truly a unicorn right. 25 years ago. Anyway, she started to talk to me about money working for me. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know money could work for you. I come from a single mom, immigrant. Money didn't work for you. You worked for money. And right. so I just thought about, because at that point in my life, I, it was like 10 years after I lost my mom. And I thought, do I want the next 10 years of my life to look like the first 10 years of my life without my mom? And I just thought, I literally had this bubble come over my head as this woman was talking to me about money. And I'm like, if this is a place where I can learn about money working for me, I need to learn everything I possibly can learn about this for myself so that I can have financial security. And that's kind of like my foray into the business. And really what that led to was learning a lot about finance for myself, building a seven-figure net worth, and, and then writing a book and sharing. And, but you know what's really important is people are afraid of finance. People are afraid or they, you know you'll make an appointment for your hair, you'll make an yes. appointment for your nails, um, you do your eyelashes, whatever. But you don't make that appointment with the financial planner because you're afraid of the numbers. You're afraid of whatever answers they're going to have for you. And, you know, listening to you right now, there are so many people that can totally relate to what you've said. Immigrant. I, my parents were immigrants. You know, I'm an immigrant child as well. I totally get that. The work ethic, I totally get that. Uh, my parents always said to me, 
you know, cash is king. If you can't afford it, you don't buy it, it. Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Save every penny. Uh, absolutely. So everything that you've just touched upon is everything that everyone can relate to. So when we come back, Jackie's going to talk to us about, you know, money and challenges that other women are, are going through as well. See you soon. Welcome back to Empowered with Elizabeth Namofsky. We're discussing women's financial stages of life. So let's continue, Jackie, because as I said before we went to commercial break, I know a lot of people are thinking, oh my goodness, this is my story as well. So my question to you are, what are the top challenges for a woman who's trying to get a handle on her finances? I think confidence is a big one. Um, you and I were talking as well before the break that we don't learn about money in school. If they're just starting to have financial conversations in the school system. But unless you came from a financially savvy family where at the dinner table they talked about money, certainly that was not the conversations I was having in my own immigrant household. If you spoke about money in, in, you know, in an immigrant family's household mind, that could lead you to, you know, getting into trouble. <laughs> but that was taboo. It was we very We were told taboo. to keep things, you know, everything was a secret back then. It, exactly. So if you don't actually know, you don't know what you don't know. And I think for so many women, the fact that we earn less than men, and because we earn less than men, we tend to be more indebted because we're trying to figure out how to pay the bills. So right. we're in more debt. And we live longer. We live longer. And we also feel ashamed about our financial circumstances. It's not realizing that the deck is, is actually stacked against us for all of those reasons. And on top of that, we're the ones who, even making less, taking off more time for caregiving, taking care of our parents, taking care of children, all of those things, you know, cost us. And we often don't even know what it costs us. So women tend to feel like they're so behind. I did a LinkedIn survey about why don't we talk about women as money as women. And women said it's because they felt they were so behind. They just didn't want to know the number. They didn't want to know how bad off they were. They just didn't want to face it. I can totally see that because, you know, a lot of people that are in a lot of debt, they will take their bills and hide them. It's open almost them. like the ostrich, right? Not open them. <laughs> you put it in your drawer, it goes away, but it doesn't go away. And we really need to take control of ourselves, of our finances, because we've got an entire future ahead of us. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the, the worst thing is to be in a scenario where you're a female and things start to happen and you feel like you have no control. So your, your partner could pass away. You could have a divorce. You could be in a scenario where you get to 60 and you don't have enough to live on. And this is the first time you're actually opening up your statements and looking at where you are. So the, the truth is, the thing that's going to help you overcome your fear of money is to look at it, to understand it. And, you know, start having people in your life, like having those conversations, like start maybe with yourself. What do I need to learn about money? And then find people who can mentor you. Maybe start a book club where you're as a group deciding, what do we want to learn about money this year? So let's pick some books. Let's go through them. Let's talk about it together. Just think about it. it's 2023. Like, what can you do to improve your confidence around money? Take some level of action around that. I love that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start asking some random questions, sure. which, which are questions that most women go through. Um, you are living in a common law relationship or you just get married. Do you have a separate bank account? A hundred percent, yes. Remember my single mom? Ladies? I agree. <laughs> Never fully rely on a man. There should be three accounts that you have when you get married or you're in a cohab relationship. The you account, the me account, the we account. <laughs> <laughs> because you never know, like you want to be in a situation, nobody knows, what, again, what's going to happen in the future. Life can be very unpredictable. So having access to liquid cash that you can touch, you might not even have the same retirement plans. You might have different risk levels. Maybe they're more risky. Your partner's more risky than you. So knowing where some of the money is, is crucial. Think about the things that you'll do together, but you'll do things separately. You'll retire separately. You might have different goals, especially ladies coming into relationships from, from previous relationships with children. Really important to have your own money, know where it's going, and feel like you have some level of control over your finances. I think for women who are getting out of relationships or, or considering divorcing, that's one of the major challenges is they don't even feel they know where the money is. They don't have access to any money on their own that's not going to be audited by their partner. The other thing too is that just came out during COVID lockdowns, 
a lot of women would go to work to walk away from their abusers from home. But now everyone was working from home and self-isolating. And if they didn't have that bank account of their own bank account, right. they didn't have the option to start a new life, walk away and protect themselves. That's, that's exactly my point. So if you don't have access to money that's just your money, then it could really put you in harm's, financial harm's way. It might make you feel trapped. So, you know, having access to your own money is crucial um, as, as you build a relationship. Always consider any relationship, go into it, hoping for the best, but preparing for things you just can't plan. And we will be right back. Welcome back to Empowered with Elizabeth Namofsky. We're discussing women's finances and throughout the life stages now, what I want to talk to you about is, you know, this, this question, um, you know, what do we need to think about if your spouse manages the finances and you're not involved in the process? And I keep thinking about all of these women that have come from other countries where, you know, they weren't driving, their, their, their spouse would drive them everywhere. Their spouse was in charge of writing checks. And when their spouse passes, the women didn't even know how to write a check and pay for their bills. So... What do we do to prepare, to prepare ourselves? You really want to have conversations, and, and this is how a financial advisor can help, is where are all the accounts located? Um, the worst time to find out that, first of all, lots of women find out that they're not in great as a financial shape as they thought they were going to be on the death of their spouse. Maybe their spouse, because they weren't involved, they didn't know that the mortgage had been remortgaged. They didn't know that the investments, um, you know, they took a risk that didn't pay off. And so you kind of want to stay involved, even if you're not the person doing it, but have regular family meetings once a year. I call it like your financial date where you check in on where's the family's assets. You plan out what you're going to do the following year. But you, you need to know where assets are located, where what bank accounts um, you have access like what bank accounts are available to the family, how things are doing. So have a conversation. And if you need help, you need support, that's where I find, you know, doing financial planning, we've been able to help clients uncover this type of information. Because that's a, that's a difficult conversation to have, especially if you are not in a relationship that is that transparent or um, I guess that trusting, because a lot of times you've got couples that will talk to each other about anything and everything, and, and it doesn't matter, and, and it's completely transparent, but then you have some where the woman might be a little bit more submissive, and right. she's afraid to ask that question. A hundred percent, especially if they're not confident about money and they're not the one making the money. So having everything like outlined in a net worth statement this is what we own. This is what we owe. Having a look at that once a year. And if you don't feel like you're confident enough to have that conversation on your own, enlisting the services of a financial planner to help you. I have similar conversations with clients. I have a lot of clients who make more money than their partners. And then it gets to the point where they go from cohabitating or wanting to get married. They want a prenup or they want some kind of cohab agreement. I totally agree with prenups. I really do. Because a lot of women, as you said, are making more than their male counterparts or their counterparts. Um, and so you, you do get married. You do jump in with both feet. But it's always good to have that protection just in case the relationship doesn't work out. Because, quite frankly, if, you've, you, know, if you have some properties and you've got some savings and you've got um, some accounts, you should hang on to them for yourself and you really don't need to share them. Yeah, 100%. So it's, it's protecting the assets that you own. It's not that you don't necessarily want to build new assets with the person. And but it doesn't mean you don't trust the person. Not at all. And also understanding where assets are located if you're not managing them. Because even if, like I hear all the time, clients that I start working with say to me, you know, my husband normally manages this. But your husband, even in the best of relationships, could pass away, could get ill, and you don't know that they don't have life insurance because you never had a conversation about it. You don't know that they have pensions at work because you've never been able to discuss where the money's actually at. So just having those conversations, if you feel empowered to do it on your own, great. If you feel like you need to enlist the services of someone, do yourself a favor and do that sooner than later. So you and I are married. <laughs> How do we have this conversation? 
You know, I think it starts with having that transparency. So if you and I are married, I come to the table talking first, right? The person who speaks first wins. So, you know, Elizabeth, you're a cutie. I want us to work. I have some money. I'm thinking about our retirement. I want to retire in the future. Let's figure out, like, what's your circumstance? I have, you know, 50000 in an investment account. I have 200000 in an RSP. But I don't know if that's going to be enough. I don't have a big pension because I'm self-employed. I don't think that's going to be enough. Do you know what you have? Let's figure this out so we can be comfortable, secure together as a family long term. So it's, it's just... It's not blaming anybody. It's not acting like you're, you're just trying to be investigative. You're trying to do what's best to secure your family's future. And I think that's important. Um, you know, girlfriends, we talk to each other. Um, and I think we need the same transparency when it comes to relationships as well. Because once money starts getting hidden, once, you know, you don't have that full transparency, it's very difficult to look at your retirement and plan your retirement with that person. But when we come back, we'll talk about retirement with Jackie just in a few moments. So don't go away. Uh, More retirement planning coming up. Welcome back to Empowered with Elizabeth Namofsky. We're discussing the financial stages of life for women with Jackie Porter, a certified financial planner at Cart Wealth Management, Inc. Now, Jackie, before we went to break, there was one more thing that you wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about, you know, this whole conversation about talking about money with a partner and figuring out if... Um, you're going to have problems later on. Um, It's just as dangerous as never having a conversation with a partner you've chosen and something happens. So consider when you start a relationship, and now these are for the younger women or even women divorced who are trying to get back into the scene. If you can't have a money conversation, if you literally can't get financially naked, you can get naked. But if you can't get financially naked, you're likely going to have challenges later on. So Remember, we were talking about having that intimate conversation about, you know, once the relationships get to a certain point and you're thinking this might be a long term person, you need to have a money conversation with them and see how that goes. If it doesn't go well, consider whether you're going to have challenges in that relationship later on. Think about that carefully. Financially naked and transparent equals transparency, which, which is what you need with every relationship anyway. One of the key things I wanted to talk about is Canada Pension Benefits. Uh, Canada Pension Plan, you know, just before you turn 60, you get this letter in the mail telling you you can you can take it at 60 or you've got a choice of 65 right. or 70. What choice do you do? Like, what choice do you make? Kind of going back to the fact that people are living longer, the fastest rising demographic in Canada and around the world are centenarians. So people are living longer and women already historic, like, live longer than men. So the FP Canada, what what we're learning is that it's actually much more helpful for women, especially women who know they're not going to have enough for retirement, to take those benefits later, not earlier. If you take your benefits at 60, you're going to lose 36% of that money. It's a lot. It's a lot, especially if you already recognize you're not going to have enough for retirement. So especially if you know you're going to be working. So sometimes people will take their CPP and they're still working. Why would you do that? Continue to build money in the CPP so you've got more money, especially for those years that you just don't know what's going to happen. So I would recommend taking CPP late actually, not taking it early. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you take it at 70, you're going to actually have 42% more money in CPP. So if you know, women, we have a longer life expectancy. If you know that you're going to be here because your parents are here, your mom's still around, she's in her 90s, chances are you're going to be better off. You're going to have a much more secure retirement having a larger CPP benefit. And you know, I, I, I know about financial literacy. I've worked in the industry for 25 years. And I still worry that I'm not going to have enough. And I don't know whether it's watching all those, you know, reading, reading Cosmopolitan growing up, you know, and, and talking about all these old retired women who didn't have enough and, and had to resort to other types of food. Um, Hot food. <laughs> yeah, I know, I didn't want to say it. But yeah, um, you know, I'm always worried about that. I think there's a real fear that women have about being bag ladies. And the only way that you can actually get over that fear is to put pen to paper, put a plan together, understand how much 
assets you have now? What's your net worth look like? What do you actually need? What's the number you need to save to have the retirement that you need? What's the worst return your investments can earn that will make sure you're going to have a secure retirement no matter what happens and that you'll be able to sleep better at night knowing that number? And the thing is, number crunching, a lot of people can't do it, but that's why they reach out to people like you. And that's why it's an easy phone call. It's an easy meeting. It really is. And I, I think what we tend to do that um, people appreciate is we reassure them. But I don't like to tell people. I want to show them. Let's look at your numbers. Let's look at your actual situation. And let me show you why you're going to be OK. That's, I think, the thing people ask me the most is, am I going to be OK? And that's a great way to end this. Am I going to be OK? Thank you so much, Jackie. Such a pleasure to be here. Great Elizabeth. to see you again. Awesome. Really good to see you as well. You heard it all here today. When you are in a common law relationship or married, keep your own separate bank account, even when you're in a great relationship, and put a lot of thought into your future and crunch the numbers to give you an idea of when to begin your Canada Pension Plan. Don't just begin taking your payment at 60. You can divert it to 65 or even 70. Make sure that you set yourself up to be financially secure in the future because you really don't want any surprises. I'm Elizabeth Namofsky, and I'm trying to empower you and make frugality fashionable. Bye for now.